and welcome back to my YouTube channel, hashtag Movie Bay. I am Movie Bay, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a recap review of episodes five and six of season six Netflix's The Circle. But before I get too into it, though, I would like for y'all to drop down and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Because here on Movie Bay, I do reviews, reactions, and commentary to movies and television. And if that is the type of content that you like, then you might as well stick around and hit the subscribe button. And if you find yourself enjoying my commentary along the way, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up and or drop a comment down below. Now, per usual, y'all know episode four left us with a cliffhanger on who was going to be blocked. So Miles had to block somebody face to face. And he decides to block Steffi. Now, during this whole little meeting, Steffi was throwing a light shade. I mean, of course, she's a little saucy because she's about to go home. Um, but I felt like she was a little bit too bothered. Like, I'm not AI, though. You messed up. I'm not AI. Okay, but you're, you are annoying. <laughs> so I'm happy you're gone. <laughs> so I'm happy you're gone. Um, she does give Miles some crystals as a parting gift. And she was like, don't worry, they're good crystals. And then in my head, I was like, you know what? Because it would be good if she gave him some bad crystals to make him lose since he blocked her. See, I probably wouldn't have accepted it just because I'm a little bit paranoid. I don't trust nobody, okay? The next day, everybody gets to see the message that Steffi left after getting blocked. And she low-key played Miles because, you know, how does the AI engineer not suss out the correct AI. And right when she's about to tell everybody her vision for who the winner was, the system glitches. And that is when Miles pops up on the screen to reveal him, not Miles, who? <laughs> All these M names. Max, the AI chat box, pops up on the screen to reveal himself as the AI bot. Now, I was thinking that this twist was revealed a little bit too soon. And then on top of that, um, the chat box also revealed himself too soon or itself too soon. Um, it just kind of made me think like, is this going to be a short season? Because one, it took five episodes to eliminate the first person. Two, the quote unquote twist of the season is now gone. I don't know, maybe production didn't think that it was going to roll over well or go over well with the viewers or whatnot. But I was just like, okay, so now that the twist of the season is done for halfway through now so the what? circle chat opens and miles is the first one to speak and he apologizes for getting um the or sending home the wrong person because steffi wasn't ai but he apologizes in a very strategic way he says i decided to trust the gut of the group basically the group's gut feeling and i went with the majority and eliminated steffi very smart because it takes the blame off of himself and makes other people remember, oh, yeah, because we did want her gone, too. Very, very smart. Now, Cassie, however, she says, you know, how does Miles, the AI engineer, get the AI wrong and says that he must have had a blonde moment. OK, this is like the third time in the circle where people uh, this season have told a quote unquote joke to someone they are aligned with and it be received as a shot. Now, let's talk about it because either they're not really building genuine connections because if we have a genuine connection, I'm going to know when you're playing or not. Or they could just think it's not funny and everybody's paranoid that no matter what anybody says, it's going to paint a target on my back. Kyle, thanks, Miles, for not listening to people that have never actually spoken to Kyle before, it's before they started judging him. And of course, Olivia feels that. And then Paul says, hopefully people are off of my back and tries to basically do a peace treaty with everybody in the group. And it's the wording. Caress, if you ever stumble across this video, girl, you are so bad at this game. I don't know. It's just, it's not, it's not working well. My last video, I said that Caress always talks games, so she will be a great contender for Big Brother. Don't do it. I changed my mind. You will probably be the first person out for playing too hard, too fast. Circle chats for this episode. Lauren reaches out to Olivia to solidify their girl alliance. And QT reaches out to Mouse to check on him about Cassie's behavior. Why is she throwing shots at him all of a sudden when they thought she thought they were cool? And they also talk about bringing Kyle into their alliance. Now, let's talk about this real quick. I feel like 
Miles and QT are fake. Even though, in my opinion, they are the biggest gamers of the season thus far. We're talking to episode six. Um, they're just fake. I feel like Miles and Kyle's relationship is one one sided. Kyle rocks with Miles more than Miles rocks with Kyle. And QT, we all know that everything that comes out of her mouth is a game. I don't even even know she really like Miles for real. Now for the circle game of this episode, finally, finally, we got one of my favorite games where the people get to draw portraits of others. Now in previous seasons, it was left up to the player if they want to be positive or negative. However, this season, you have to be negative because it is entitled poor traits. So you have to draw a picture highlighting the poor traits of others and it will be anonymous so miles draws cassie as a snake in the grass olivia draws paul as a big mouth and a big ego but paul isn't offended hence the big ego <laughs> lauren draws qt um with some really nice hair but basically just questioning why is she wearing glasses i feel like if she wanted to hint at her being secretive or a catfish she should have came a little bit harder Kyle drew Olivia as um, a person who's like more than likely to turn your back on someone. Cassie drew Miles as having no game. Facts. Paul draws Lauren as being two-faced. Not 100% sure why. Um, he says because he didn't think he had a problem with Lauren, but she thought he was um, AI. But two-faced implies that you are fake to me. Or you act my act one way in front of my face, and then behind my back you act another way. Tell me about if I'm missing something, y'all. And then QT draws Kyle as being boring. Now I don't think Kyle is boring, but I do think he is corny. So this episode ends with a couple of circle messages after the game. So Cassie reaches out to Miles to talk about why would somebody draw her as a snake in the grass? Y'all know because they have the blonde alliance, right? Well, Miles actually admits that he is the one who drew Cassie that way. And y'all, that's one thing I like about Miles. He will tell it like a T.I. is, period. However, that doesn't uh, go over well with Cassie. But And Miles recognizes that maybe he went too far and he apologizes for it. And he actually makes it known that he'll apologize in front of the entire group if he needs to. Now, QT reaches out to Kyle because she wants to know, Big Brother... Who would draw you as being boring with fake muscles? You, girl. You would do that. So QT's whole objective of this message is to pour fuel on the fire between Kyle and Olivia's beef. And she honestly successfully frames Olivia for the portrait of Kyle. Um, and in the same breath, she adds Kyle to her and uh, Miles' alliance. This girl is, like she said, she said it. She says, I might be a psychopath. Because how are you going to act concerned when you are the one that drew the portrait of him? But y'all know me. I love me a gamer. And right now, QT and Miles, they're doing it for me. That is the end of episode five. Um, but before we get into episode six, I want y'all to drop down and hit that thumbs up button if you are enjoying my commentary thus far. And of course, drop down in the comment section down below. I want to know, who do y'all think had the shadiest portrait? I feel like this season really had the gloves on, not the gloves off. Okay, the kid gloves on. Because I remember, I can't remember what season it was, maybe season three or four. But I remember Everson, the cruise director, right? He drew this portrait of somebody on the circle. And when I tell y'all, it still haunts me to this day. It haunts me to this day. This cast... They The production made them be messy, and they still weren't messy enough. But steady and still, who do you believe had the best portrait? Now, let's go ahead and get into episode six and meet some of these new people, y'all. Episode six begins with two new players coming into the circle. First, we meet Jordan, who's 24 from Austin, Texas, and he's a photographer. Now, Jordan is going to be entering the game as his old 300-pound self, a.k.a. Big J., now, this is new. Nobody has ever entered as themselves a couple years ago. Now, he says he's going to catfish as himself mm -hmm. <laughs> because when he was 300 pounds, he was a friendly face, a big teddy bear. Everybody loved him and, you know, he got along with everybody. As opposed to now, he comes off as a douchebag. Well, maybe you are just a douchebag. Nobody likes a skinny bitch. 
Okay, <laughs> nobody likes a skinny bitch. All right, the next person we meet is Autumn, who's 21 from Tennessee. She is a redneck ranch hand. Don't call my ignorance, but the the word redneck has a negative connotation, and y'all know it. So I, we'll see how Autumn goes in this circle for me. The circle game slash chat for this episode is everybody gets to choose one of the new people that they want to chat with, but the new person decides who they get who they want to respond to. All right. So Paul, Cassie, and QT all reach out to Autumn and Autumn chooses Paul because Paul is the only person. Well, actually, Paul and QT both wanted to spill tea, but, you know, Paul mentioned something about line dancing and beers. And because Autumn is a country girl, she chooses Paul. Now, when I tell y'all Paul gives all the tea, Paul gave all of the tea. And in my mind, if I was Autumn, I would have been like, he has nobody in this game. Because if you had somebody in this game, you wouldn't be giving up all this information. So Kyle, Olivia, and Miles, they all reach out to Big J. And Big J decides that he wants to chat with Miles because Miles dropped a little hint in there that he was influencer last time and he had to block the last person. So Miles' message to Big J is... He gives tea, but I don't know. It's kind of like tailored tea, if that makes sense. So he says, Paul's game is messy. Um, he is kind of like in a relationship or flirts with QT. And he needs a circle bestie. Okay? Like, I got my little girl, but now I need a bestie. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, what about Kyle? And that is exactly why I told y'all that relationship is one-sided. Now, y'all... I want to talk about Big J real quick or Little J real quick. He's a gamer. He chose Miles because Miles had influencer power. So, of course, you want to align yourself with in a previous influencer. However, he did that so he can take over Miles' power. The circle group chats opens and Autumn actually asked the entire group, is there any tea that she needs to know so she can uh, make her decision in the ratings today? I was like, well, that's very bold of you. However, Cassie kind of bites the bait a little bit. And she says that some people have some explaining to do after the portrait game. Now, this is when Miles owns up in front of the group, like he said he would, that he drew the portrait of Cassie. However, I didn't see an apology, did y'all? Last private message of this episode is from Olivia to Kyle. She reaches and extends an olive branch to Kyle in hopes of a fresh start, and they actually bond over losing their fathers at a young age. This is probably the, the most genuine conversation that we've had thus far this season of The Circle, but, you know, don't hold me to that because sometimes I really skip through these boring-ass conversations. All right, so the group gets an alert, and it is time to vote. Now listen, Cassie decides this vote, she wants to flip it. So the people who were influencers before and even people she's been close to, she wants to rank them super low in hopes of making her super high. So let's go through some of these votes. Now, Miles puts QT as number one, of course, and he rates Cassie as number five. I think it's safe to say that the Blonde Alliance is over. Cassie, with her vote flip, puts Kyle, who she I don't even think she's ever talked to, as number one, and Liv, her closest alliance, as number six. QC puts Cal as number two because of the Fuego alliance, and she puts Liv in number six in hopes of framing her still for, you know, the portrait of Kyle. And Big J. Big J puts QT as number one because she seems well-liked by everybody and puts Miles as number four because he does not want Miles to be an influencer. He wants to take over that spot. So now that the ratings are in, let's go ahead and get to them. Coming in at number seven is Cassie. I feel like everybody noticed that Cassie has been acting different in the group chats. And um, instead of her, you know, wholesome country mom act, it's more so of a I'm trying to play this game act. And I think it was just kind of like too little too late or too blunt. I'll say that. Number six is Olivia. Paul got number five. Miles is at number four, right in the middle. Lauren is number three. And QT is number two with Kyle coming in first. When I tell y'all before, before the ratings, I definitely thought Kyle was going to get six or seven. I promise you. I did not 
not see him getting number one in these ratings. But I ain't even hold you. I think I'm rooting for Kyle. So now it's time for QT and Kyle to go to the hangout and decide on who they want to block. Kyle, of course, says that Miles is safe because he's been loyal. Not really. QT is open to getting rid of Liv and she plays it as if she has Kyle's back. But of course, he told tells her that they made up earlier. So we'll come back to her if we need to. Now, they both think Paul is a loose cannon. But really, when it comes down to Lauren, they both are like, hmm, Kyle doesn't trust her, even though that was his first connection. And QT is more so for strategy because Lauren gets along with everybody. So when it boils down to it, they are down to Cassie because of her switch up, Lauren for strategy reasons, and Olivia because she might be gunning for Kyle. I personally think that they're going to get rid of Cassie. I feel like it will be a uh, a wild card and honestly a good wild card if they do get rid of Lauren though even though Lauren doesn't have any more alliances at this point but she's good at making friends so she could probably get the two new people I don't know who's to say thank y'all so much for tuning into my YouTube channel be sure y'all like comment and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos just like this I am going to be dropping episodes seven and eight very soon so don't forget to ring the notification bell thank y'all so much for tuning in and I'll see y'all next time bye